so many are focused on the darkness rather than the authority of the believer. Others are blinded to the satanic schemes, rapidly destroying the very moral fabric of our families and nation. My guest says, no more fear, no more anxiety. Welcome, Holy Spirit. As every second goes by in this show, the intensity of God's glory will be stronger and stronger and stronger. My guest, Jeremiah Johnson, recently had a dream about the five hidden demonic spirits at work in your life that war against your good end time destiny. Jeremiah, explain. Sid, I had probably one of the most spectacular dreams of my life where I saw a woman in a beautiful white dress and I looked down at her feet and she was wearing commando boots. And I knew right then that this woman represented the end time warrior bride. And I heard trumpets and the sound of the hooves of horses. I knew that we were in the end of the end. And I saw a scroll handed to this woman, and on the scroll said five demonic strategies against the end time church. And so on that uh, scroll, I saw the orphan spirit, I saw the religious spirit, I saw the Jezebel spirit, I saw witchcraft attack, and then I saw family warfare. And so waking up from the dream, I knew that God was giving me a mandate to warn the end time church about these five hinted demonic strategies, but to also give them keys for victory. Well, let's, let's talk about one that everyone can see before their very eyes. That is uh, the enemy called family warfare. Yeah, you know, the warfare for me started even when I was in my mother's womb. She was pregnant with me, had a dream, and God told her to name me Jeremiah, but that Satan would try to kill me on many times in my life. So I was actually born with the cord wrapped around my neck. I was blue. My mother was losing consciousness. And miraculously, God revived not only me, but her. I grew up as a pastor's son in a charismatic home, but when I was in college, my mom was diagnosed bipolar, schizophrenic, and ended up in a mental institution. It was also then that my father stepped down from ministry and began to deal with suicide. And so I began to experience just great family warfare from the womb, even growing up. But one of the things that I learned, one of the keys that God gave me is that the places of our greatest warfare are the places of our greatest inheritance. And there are people that are watching right now that Satan is attacking your family. You're going through it. I've been through it. But what the devil is attacking is actually an indicator, Sid, that this is what God wants to pour out glory on. And even for me, it got worse. You know, I have a brother who was in prison during this time, and actually right now, he's in a federal penitentiary serving a long-term prison sentence. So I understand the attacks, the wiles of the devil, but yet God was with me in family warfare and kept giving me keys to break through. Tell, tell me how you got through this. You know, it was a revelation of the goodness of God. I believe that the goodness of God was never meant to be challenged by death, disease, divorce, and even sickness. The more that I proclaim that God was good, no matter what my circumstances were, the more that he gave me what I would call a holy resolve. So I choose whether it was good or bad to believe in the goodness of God. You know, you know Jeremiah, what's coming to mind is Moses asked a question, and Moses said, God, show me your glory. And God answered him in a way that seemed strange. It's almost like he had a synonym for glory. This is what God said, I'll let my goodness pass before you. That's what you're talking about. The more of the goodness of God you speak about, the more of the presence of the 
awesome manifest presence of the glory of God appears. Yeah, proclaiming the goodness of God, it pushes back darkness. Proclaiming the goodness of God, even in difficult circumstances, it helps you to renew your mind. You know, sometimes the, the devil is attacking in some of these seasons with such for, uh, ferociousness, if you will, like a, 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 a coming after you so much, it seems like the darkness is winning. But I found that when you proclaim the goodness of God, it recalibrates you, it pushes back the darkness, and it helps you to recognize that if God is for you, who can be against you? And said, I just, I feel right now, people are watching, and God is literally destroying demonic strongholds over your mind. Some of you are angry at God. Lord, why is this happening? And said, I found why is an invalid question that makes us an invalid. I know when my, my mom is in a mental institution, my dad suicidal, my brother. I had to move beyond why to the what. God, what are you teaching me? Lord, how can I move beyond this circumstance and get the victory? And I can just tell you that God has been good, He's been faithful, and He's been with me every step of the way. It seems to be in believers and non-believers alike an emphasis on the darkness. Yeah, I think that the darkness gets magnified because we allow it to be our frame of reference. We allow darkness to be our default. And I think we have to go back to the Word of God and recognize that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, He made a public spectacle of the devil. He tore down principalities and powers, and He really is seated far above all principalities and powers. So I think that rather than magnify darkness, it's real, the devil's real, he's alive, but our God is greater, our God has gained the victory, and we need to declare that. Now, very briefly, Jeremiah, when did this gift of prophecy come on you? Because you, you've given some amazing prophecies from God over the years. Yeah, so I had that supernatural birth experience, and I started beginning to have prophetic dreams around seven years old. And even from my father's stage at the church, I began to prophesy at nine years old. I have dreams. I'd see a woman who was ill. I knew her name from the dream. I would tell my dad. She would show up to church that Sunday. We would prophesy prophesy to her and God would heal her. So it's been a journey since I was a youth. When we return, Jeremiah will explain why so many believers are unaware of the strategies of the devil and how they so easily go undetected. But no more. Be right back. We will be right back to it's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Christina from It's Supernatural. Jeremiah Johnson wants to share with you his brand new resources that gives the inside scoop for you to supernaturally thrive in 2024. Turbulent times means more opportunities for you. So get prepared as the greater glory of God falls upon his church. Now here's Jeremiah Johnson to tell you more about what God says is coming up in 2024. And remember, just call or go online for his great new book and CD. Thanks for watching and Shalom. Hi, it's Jeremiah Johnson. I recently wrote a brand new book called The Warrior Bride, conquering the five demonic spirits that war against God's end time church. And I've even made an exclusive CD, What Is God Saying for 2024 and Beyond? I had a dramatic dream where I saw a warrior bride who was getting ready for battle, but it was very important that the warrior bride understood the five demonic strategies that was going to be waged against her in the last days. We know that as God is raising up an end time army, Satan is going to try to do his best to keep us from opening up our mouth and declaring the goodness of God. In this book, you're going to be empowered to walk in the authority that Jesus Christ has given you by his death and resurrection. And you're gonna be filled with hope that no matter the difficult circumstances that you face, God is with you, he's for you, and he's going to see you through every step of the way. I'm so excited about what is coming in 2024. 
I really believe that God is particularly highlighting female voices in America and the nations of the earth who are breaking free from the spirit of religion and walking in their divine destiny. I also see the rise of house churches. We're going to see the rise of hubs. God is calling this generation to do church in a different way than we've ever known. It's going to be great. It's Christina again. Find out much more about confronting and being victorious over the five demonic strategies the enemy is aiming right at you and the End Time Church in 2024. Just call or go online for Jeremiah's book and CD. We now return to It's Supernatural. Jeremiah Johnson, we all have heard about the Jezebel spirit. Tell us about what the Jezebel spirit does. Yeah, the Jezebel spirit is a controlling, manipulative, it's a seductive, evil spirit that really it seeks a host. Even as this, the Queen Jezebel in the Bible had to have King Ahab as a partner, this controlling, manipulative, seductive spirit, it seeks a host. In other words, it seeks men and women that it can dominate and that it control and it can usurp authority through. And so I have seen the Jezebel spirit operate not only through the church leaders, I've also seen the Jezebel spirit operate in marriages and families. I think it's important to recognize. Yeah, give me an example of in, in a marriage or family how it would operate. Yeah, so there's an agenda that the Jezebel spirit has to take away the free will choice of a person. And so you could have a spouse who would manipulate and control their, their significant other to do something that they don't want to do. So it can be threatening, it can be intimidating. Sid, it wants to get its own way, and it will do that at all costs. So when you spot it, what can you do? To me, freedom from the Jezebel spirit looks like having good boundaries. The Jezebel spirit does not want to be told no. You know, oftentimes we're in situations and circumstances where we don't know how to speak up. We don't know how to say what we want. And as I've oftentimes counseled people, people that are afraid of conflict are number one targets for the Jezebel spirit. Mm. The Jezebel spirit seeks people who are non-confrontational because it sees them as an easy prey or a host. So it's gender neutral. It can operate through men and women. We understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and rulers. So it's an evil spirit. But oftentimes the way that it ends up working through individuals is it ends up wanting to get its own way. It ends up wanting to dominate and control other people. So if you see that in a spouse, in a pastor, in a business associate, what can you or could you do? Well, I would confront that person and say, hey, I feel manipulated. I feel controlled. I don't feel like I have a choice in this circumstance. So I think sometimes that phrase, we teach people how we want to be treated. And so a lot of times this evil spirit grows in strength over time because we've allowed it to operate. You know, so we not only need to repent from operating in this spirit, but notice in the book of Revelation, Jesus just doesn't go after the operation. He says, I have this against you. You have been tolerating the spirit of Jezebel. And so God is also talking to people today saying, you know what? It is sinful to be a manipulator, a controller, to intimidate people. If that's you, may the Lord bring us to repentance even now. But if we're also someone that's been tolerating this spirit, someone that I'm a doormat, someone that you just, Lord, help me to find that will. Help me to find your voice so I stop being a prey to this evil spirit. Uh, let's jump to another one. 
Uh, you talk about a religious spirit. What is that? A religious spirit has a form of godliness but denies the power of God. A religious spirit is okay with church attendance so long as you don't actually experience the dunamis power of God. Sid, I'll take it a step further. I believe that the religious spirit is the author of cessationism, a doctrine of demons that says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are no longer for today. And so as I'm traveling all over the world preaching, I'm running into primarily either the Jezebel spirit or the religious spirit. It produces an apathetic, complacent, I go to church, you go to church, but is anyone really experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit? And I feel right now that God is delivering people watching from a dry, stale, going through the motions. God is breaking routine. He's breaking business as usual. And I hear God saying, Sid, I'm bringing radical renewal to the church. I'm going to bring renewal. I'm going to send revival. And there's, there's people waking up right now to the truth of the real gospel that brings power and transformation. Yeah, you know, a thought that's crossing my mind is so many good people think either A, tongues or supernatural languages is not for today. Uh, and, and based, Jeremiah, based on my study of tongues, I agree with Paul, not those people. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than anyone. Paul said, I wish you all prayed in tongues. Now, it, it, why is it that tongues is fought so much by this religious spirit? Well, I believe only the devil would oppose the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit. What people don't realize is this is more than just, well, I don't think this is for today. This is demonic. This is the devil. This is a religious spirit empowering people to come against the Holy Spirit. And again, I believe that God is breaking the power of the religious spirit by demonstration. And people are going to be supernaturally filled by the Holy Spirit in the last days, there's going to be greater glory and outbreaking of the, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so I even feel like the Lord is saying to some of us, we need to stop trying to explain the Holy Spirit to people and start demonstrating the Holy Spirit to people. You know, every one of these strategies, there's so many layers of rich teaching that you give, but just tell, give us a little sample of the strategy of witchcraft. Wow. Yeah, witchcraft attack is something that I've experienced in my own life. I came into a season where they leaked our address online. We went through the mm. death threats and even said it was amazing. It, I mean, it was hurtful, but we were being attacked by charismatic Christians. We were being attacked by brothers and sisters who took issue with the decision that I had made and tried to follow the Holy Spirit. But this power of witchcraft came over me and I just thought I was having a hard season. And I would just say there are many people you think you're having a bad day and you don't realize it's actually a demonic spirit of heaviness. I was under more than just a rough season. I was underneath the power of witchcraft that comes to dominate, that comes to oppress us, and it tries to thwart us away from the will of God. And I'm grateful, Sid, that that a group of prophets gathered around me and by decrees they began to break off the power of witchcraft off of my life and here's the key whatever God has delivered us from we now have authority over Whoa. and I want to prophesy <laughs> That's to I, want to do. I want to prophesy to people today 
that where Satan has attacked you, it's a sign of where God wants to promote you. And even as God has delivered me from the power of witchcraft, he's breaking it off those watching today. And where you have been confused, I prophesy clarity. Where you have been sick in your body, God is delivering many from a demonic spirit of affliction, and you're going to be healed in Jesus' name. Okay, when these prophets broke the witchcraft off of you, I'm kind of curious. Mm. Did you realize how bad it was until it left? No, it was honestly one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. I mean, I dropped to the ground and my body was shaking underneath the authority that they were operating in to break this power of witchcraft. I, I was out of touch with the demonic power that had come against me. And I really want to touch on this because some people in the body of Christ, they don't take seriously enough the power of their words. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I didn't realize that people speaking evil against against me had formed a demonic spell in the spirit realm that I had come up underneath. And I feel that same anointing and glory that broke me free. I feel it right now. And I, 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 here's what I believe. I believe that when he prays for you, there is, he used an operative word, heaviness. Another word is oppression. Another word, is, word might be demonic fear. And I believe that when he prays for you, because he has the authority, because he was set free, he now has the authority to set you free. I want you to believe that you are going to be set free in every area of your life when Jeremiah prays for you right now. I break the power of demonic witchcraft in marriage. Every word curse that a spouse has spoken over you, we dismantle its power right now in Jesus' name. I break the power of suicide that's operating in marriages, causing someone to feel like who's watching. I, I've lost all hope. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose my kids. I break that power right now in Jesus' name. And we just decree that young people who are giving up hope because they're parents are breaking up. We just say that youth are going to be revived. What the devil meant for evil, God will use for good. And I just reverse every curse, every demonic breaking spirit of covenant. We rebuke you right now in Jesus name. And we say, even as God has raised up me as a living witness in this generation for his glory, I decree that those watching today are going to be raised up as living witnesses in Jesus' name. I want to make sure that you know Jesus the way my guests know Jesus, that you have your own experiences with God. Repeat this prayer out loud. Mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner. I've made many mistakes. I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Washes, me washes me clean. And now that I'm clean, and now that I'm clean. Jesus, come inside, of me. Jesus come inside of me. I make you Lord of my life. Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, you see, you're prophetic. You see things about ready to happen in America. You can just turn the news on and you can see from the evil lens. Tell me something from the God goodness lens. I see God anointing female voices like never before. I believe that especially in America, we're about to see the rise of Esther's and Deborah's, where women are going to begin to lift up their voice and sit. It's going to make the religious devils go crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually. We call it, we Jews call it Mashuga. Yeah. Praise it. <laughs> and God is going to raise up Mordecai's who are going to champion women. 
And I just want to speak to a few good men who are still out there, who are not insecure, who love Jesus. It's time to make room for the Esthers and Debras. And to my sisters in Christ, I want to encourage you that the power of religion is being broken off of your life, that every word that was spoken against your ministry is broken. And 2024 is going to be the year of the woman.